Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Maybe you're here because you just lost the 50-50. Maybe you pulled her from the standard banner. Or maybe you've just decided it's time to give this broke astrologist some love and mora and aren't sure where to start. Whatever the reason, welcome to my Mona guide. Getting to know her mechanics has a bit of a learning curve to it, so to help you out, this updated guide will go over her kit and talents, hidden gameplay texts and tips, constellations, best artifact and weapon builds, and team comps. Let's dive in. Mona is a Hydro Catalyst user who's often played as an off-field quickswap support but can also take an on-field DPS or driver role. Her kit brings interesting support utilities that buff your team's damage while also having the potential to deal some crazy reaction damage. So let's go over her talents to understand how her kit works. Mona's normal attacks have a 4-hit sequence with a backward teleport movement between the second and third hit. These attacks follow standard ICD rules and are generally single target but have a very small AoE which can deal splash damage to very closely grouped enemies. Then her charge attack deals higher damage, has a bigger AoE, and has no ICD. But it has a pretty high 50 stamina cost, so watch your stamina if you're trying to use it frequently. Be careful with animation cancelling as well, since if you cancel her charge attack too soon, it won't deal the damage, but it will still consume the stamina. If you play her as an on-field DPS, getting the hang of her auto attack combos, as well as efficiently spamming her charge attacks for reaction damage, will help you squeeze out as much damage from her as possible. Then we have Mona's skill. Tapping it summons a phantom that can crowd control enemies by taunting them, and this lasts 5 seconds. During that time, it will emit AoE Hydro damage every second for the first 4 seconds, then deal a Hydro explosion as it expires. If you hold her skill instead of tapping, it will make her also jump backwards as she places the Phantom. This movement has some brief iframes, so you can use it to dodge enemy attacks, though it may take some practice to get used to the timing. When Mona sprints, she moves quickly as a Hydro current underground, and this allows her to sprint through water as well. However, be careful as Mona can still take damage in this state. Then when she resurfaces, she applies Hydro to nearby enemies. It's possible to use its Hydro application to your advantage, like generating a Dendro Core for example, but it could also work against you, like stealing a reaction, such as accidentally triggering Vaporize on a Pyro-affected enemy. Sprinting around with Mona can take some practice, especially when trying to quickly maneuver around a bunch of enemies. Her exiting animation actually used to be quite clunky, but Genshin has at least improved it to be easier to work with. Once you get the hang of it, it can be pretty fun, and she makes a great taxi for open world traversal. Once Mona's Ascension 1 passive is unlocked, sprinting for 2 seconds with an enemy around creates a phantom similar to her skill. But this one only lasts for 2 seconds and deals half the damage of the original phantom. In actual combat, it might be uncommon for you to stay sprinting for that long, but at least you get some additional hydro application and crowd controlling if you do. Meanwhile, her Ascension 4 passive converts 20% of her current energy recharge stat into hydro damage bonus, synergizing with her ER Ascension stat and allowing you to double dip into building her ER. We'll discuss the effects of this more in her stat builds later on. And she has a crafting related passive as well, where you have a 25% chance to refund a portion of the weapon ascension materials used. A nice bonus to help get more value out of material crafting. Now for the most complicated part of her kit, Mona's Burst. There are some hidden mechanics involved, so let's break down how it works and some text you can apply to better utilize her burst potential. At face value, we can see that when Mona casts her burst, she creates an illusory bubble shown by the constellation patterns that appear on the enemies. Small enough enemies will be immobilized by this bubble. At the same time, it applies the wet status, which is just hydro, onto enemies. Then when the bubble pops, it deals a big instance of hydro damage, and this now starts the Omen Durations countdown. The Omen buff is her most important support utility as it gives a huge damage bonus to attacks dealt to the affected enemy. It sounds simple, but if we break down these steps more closely, there are many properties the in-game description doesn't explicitly elaborate on. First is regarding the Omen buff duration. The Omen status is actually applied from the instance you cast her burst or when her bubble is applied, not just when it pops. This might seem contrary to the in-game description which says that the enemy affected by the bubble should sustain damage which causes it to pop and apply omen, but it really is coded to apply the omen buff right away even just casting Mona's burst on them. In fact, the indicator of the enemy having the omen buff is the starry purple aura around them which you can see coexists with the bubble while it's not popped yet. That means any damage dealt even before and while the bubble pops already benefits from the omen buff's damage bonus. After the bubble pops, you'll see this bubbling animation as well, indicating that the omen timer has indeed started to tick. At talent level 10, omen can give up to 60% damage bonus to your team's attacks that gets added to other damage bonuses of the same type, which is quite significant. It's also not snapshotable since it's a status applied to the enemy, not directly to the party members. Take note though that this won't buff transformative reactions like overload, swirl, bloom, hyperbloom, and the like, as those are calculated by using separate unique 
unique reaction modifiers. However, amplifying and additive reactions like vaporize, melt, aggravate, and spread that use a character's damage percent bonus stat will benefit from the omen buff. Depending on how you're using Mona, it's likely the case that you'll only get maybe 6 to 8 seconds of buff uptime since in actual combat, you likely won't wait too long before popping her bubble. There are many teams in which this buff uptime is enough, but there are also ways to extend this buff's duration which we'll get back to very soon. Popping the bubble also has unique hidden mechanics. By default, the bubble can only last up to 8 seconds, so if no hits or attacks affect the bubble, it will explode by itself. But aside from that, you're supposed to deal damage to the enemy in order to pop it. Sounds pretty straightforward, but here's another tricky mechanic at play. See, it isn't actual raw damage that will pop the bubble. Rather, it's a different type of damage, and that is poise damage. Almost all character attacks and abilities will deal a certain amount of poise damage, which is a hidden mechanic related to how we can interrupt or stagger enemies and vice versa. Though there are very rare exceptions of attacks not dealing poise damage like Zhongli's pillar pulses. But more importantly, there are certain states, which we refer to as stagger or poise resistant states, in which enemies can take actual damage but not poise damage, which will not pop the bubble. For example, during some enemy animations, they become stagger resistant, like in this clip with Magu Kenki doing his attacks or when Bishop type enemies leap in the air. Enemies with elemental shields or elemental armor are also stagger resistant until their shields are down. These are just some possible examples of not being able to deal poise damage and most of these stagger resistant states are dependent on the enemies. Here's where it gets very interesting. There is a stagger resistant state which we can induce with our character's elemental reactions and that is with freeze since as long as an enemy remains frozen they cannot take poise damage as well. This opens up a way for us to extend the omen buff. If Mona's burst freezes the enemy or they're already frozen prior to her burst, then attacks that will not unfreeze them will also not pop the bubble, and consequently will not start the omen duration timer. You'll recall that her omen buff is already active from the moment you apply her bubble on enemies. If you can prolong the time before the bubble explodes, then you can extend her omen buff way longer than its typical duration. Let's take a look at it in action. Here, Rosaria's burst is on the field and Kazaha infuses his burst with cryo as well, which are applying cryo on the bishops right before Mona's turn. And upon casting her burst, we can see that the wet applied on cryo froze the enemies in place. After that, I'll switch to Risley, who will then do his attack combos. Notice that even if Rosaria, Kazaha, and Risley are all dealing damage to them, the bubble is still active since the enemies stay frozen, which extends the omen buff's total duration. Be careful though, if you apply her burst first on an unfrozen enemy then try to freeze them afterwards with a cryo attack, this will pop the bubble since they receive poise damage from the cryo attack before getting frozen. Attacks that also unfreeze the enemy like shattering or melting them will also pop the bubble. Having that huge damage bonus active for a longer period of time is valuable for boosting your team's damage output, and this is one tech you'll definitely want to take advantage of in her freeze teams. Now there's another mechanic that can let Mona deal huge nuke damage with her burst, and that's the vaporize combo, which involves triggering a forward vaporize reaction on her bubble pop damage. Forward vaporize, which is hydro applying on pyro, has a 2 times reaction multiplier, and combined with her huge burst damage multiplier, that makes it very potent for nuke damage. So how does it work? Start by applying pyro on the enemy before Mona's burst. Then when you cast it, the initial wet application reacts with the pyro aura to vaporize and remove it. But remember that it doesn't deal damage since it's just a wet status and not actual hydro damage. In order to trigger vaporize, you'll have to wait for 2.5 seconds before using a pyro attack to break the bubble. The pyro attack will first apply pyro, then the bubble pop will apply hydro, which consequently triggers the vaporize reaction damage with the huge 2 times reaction multiplier. The 2.5 seconds waiting time before popping the bubble is due to the standard ICD of the burst, which in simple terms is how long it takes for the same elemental ability to be able to reapply its element. If you pop the bubble too soon before the ICD kicks in, you'll get the hydro damage but not the hydro application, meaning the damage won't trigger vaporize. It's important that Mona's burst cast will trigger the vaporize reaction and clear the enemy of any elemental aura. Otherwise, if you cast your burst without a pre-existing pyro aura on an enemy, then it will apply a hydro aura on them. Then if you apply a pyro attack, it will react with the current hydro aura instead of letting Mona's burst trigger vaporize on a pyro aura. If Bennett's burst is also buffing Mona, you shouldn't switch her out too early. Bennett's buff can linger for about 2 seconds even if a character leaves the field. So if you switch Mona out too soon, there's a chance that Bennett's buff will expire on her before you pop the bubble. Instead, you want to wait for about 2 seconds just as the ICD is kicking in before switching Mona out into another pyro unit who will pop the bubble. If you like seeing huge numbers, then this is definitely a fun trick. But in actual combat, it can be more challenging to execute this combo consistently 
and perfectly, especially when there are many real-time factors at play. Don't worry though, as you don't need to flawlessly execute this every time you play a vaporized team with Mona. If you do try though, it can certainly be very satisfying to pull it off mid-combat. Mona's practical use in combat can be as simple as pressing her skill in burst, but her kit's hidden mechanics and technicalities certainly make for some interesting synergies and challenging yet fulfilling combat tricks. For now, knowing these texts are sufficient enough, but if you're curious about Mona's other technical aspects, I highly encourage you to check out other resources that can go into lengthier in-depth details. For her talent priorities, focus on her burst level if playing her as mainly an off-field support. But if you're playing her as an on-field DPS too, level up her normal attack talents as well. Her skill will be low priority in either case. Now that we understand Mona's base kit, let's see what you get from more 50-50 losses. C1 makes Omen increase the damage of electrocharged, vaporized, hydro swirl reactions and slightly increase the frozen duration of enemies, and these bonuses last for 8 seconds. It aims to increase the potency of all hydro-related elemental reactions, save for Dendro, since Bloom and its related reactions did not exist during the game's initial release. It would have been interesting if this were updated to reflect that. C2 gives Mona a 20% chance to do a free, no stamina charge attack after a normal attack, which can be triggered every 5 seconds. If you're using her in an on-field DPS playstyle, this can help get an additional damage or reactions. C3 increases her burst level by 3. C4 gives 15% crit rate if attacking enemies affected by Omen. It's simple, but also one of her best constellations as it gives Omen another way to further increase the overall damage an enemy takes. C5 increases her skill level by 3. And lastly, C6 makes her sprint accumulate a 60% charge attack damage bonus for every second she's sprinting, which maxes out at a 100% 180% bonus or 3 seconds of sprinting. However, it's impractical to use this in general combat, so it's not really a very useful constellation aside from perhaps charge attack nuke showcases. Now for her artifact build, her preferred stats and sets can be categorized for either a support or DPS role. For a pure support build, it's a very low investment but nonetheless effective build, which mainly aims to ensure she can burst every rotation. There are some sets that can give additional team support buffs as well. Of course, expect her damage to be lower since her main goal is to help her teammates. For the main stats, the most important thing is to get an energy recharge sands, while the goblet and circlet can really be whatever. Though if you're trying to maximize her burst damage, then get attack, hydro damage, and crit main stats if you can. Similarly, prioritize getting ER from her substats to hit your desired ER target, while attack and crit stats are welcome as well. Her ER target can widely range from 200 to 300% and heavily depend on your team and combat scenarios, so adjust it accordingly based on your testing experience. But you can just stack as much ER as possible if you want to cover most cases, even in particle-hungry scenarios. As for her artifact sets, the Noblesse is her best generalist support set as it gives a 12-second team-wide attack buff after using the wearer's burst. But note that this doesn't stack with multiple users in the team. If another teammate is using this already, an alternative attack buff is to use the 4-piece tenacity. This gives a team-wide attack and shield strength buff for 3 seconds if the user hits an enemy with their skill. But as you can imagine, this won't have much uptime due to Mona's short skill duration. So ideally, you'll use teammate abilities that can snapshot or have short durations too. There are also 4-star support sets with situationally good uses. The Instructor set, which gives a team-wide EM buff after the user triggers an elemental reaction while on field, can be great for a reaction team. In particular, if you're using her as a Hydro Applicator in a Bloom-based reaction team, then this is a highly recommended set to boost her support value. Another is the Exile, which gives the user ER and generates energy for teammates after the user casts their burst, if you think your teammates need the extra energy generation. For a mix of ER and damage, there's the 4-piece emblem, which gives ER and converts the user's ER into burst damage bonus, which is perfect for Mona's burst focused support playstyle. Those are her support build tips, so let's go to her DPS build, where she aims to provide a lot of damage from her burst nuke or on field attacks. Her sands will generally want attack, though EM can also be a good alternative as long as you can consistently trigger vaporized reactions with her. You can also run an ER sands if you haven't hit your ER target yet just through her substats. Then you can generally go for a hydro damage goblet, but an attack goblet is also just as good of an option if you're stacking a lot of damage bonuses already, especially considering her ER to hydro damage conversion. Then get a crit circlet that will give you a good ratio. For her substats, get ER as needed to burst every rotation, then look for crit, attack, and EM if being played as a vaporized DPS. Her ER goals will range from around 150 to 200% since she'll now be able to catch particles on field, but this could always change depending on your team and combat scenarios. For her sets, you can go the two-piece combo route of attack, hydro damage, ER, 
Noblesse, Marie Chaussée, or EM for vape teams particularly. They give useful set bonuses and offer a lot of flexibility for choosing main stats and substats. Among full sets, there's the 4 piece Heart of Depths, which aside from buffing Hydro Damage, will buff normal and charged attack damage after using her skill, so it's a great set for an on-field playstyle. The more recent 4 piece Nymph Stream buffs attack and Hydro Damage, which buffs all her kit's aspects, but you'll need to use all her necessary abilities to stack the bonuses. We once again have the 4 piece emblem for the ER and burst damage. Though her ER requirements can be lower as an on-fielder, she still gets a substantial damage bonus from this set. And lastly, there's the 4 piece Wanderer's Troop that can be used specifically for a spam, charge attack, vaporized playstyle. Next are Mona's weapon options, which we can again distinguish between support and DPS oriented weapons. Starting with support weapons, these main candidates all have their own strengths and situationally good cases. Thrilling Tails gives a huge attack buff to the next teammate you switch after Mona's turn, which gives a significant damage boost. Pavonius Codex helps hit Mona's ER target and lets her battery the team with extra particles, which is great for energy hungry teams. Prototype Amber gives some minor healing utility, which in some cases can allow you to forgo a dedicated healer in favor of more offense, and it gives extra energy too. Hakushin Ring also gives ER and is able to buff electro damage if you're using her with electro teammates. Of course, these weapons are focused on supporting other DPSs, so expect Mona's personal damage to take a backseat. As for DPS weapons, you're mostly looking at those with attack percent or crit substats that can also offer elemental or universal damage bonuses. They can be viable even in off-field or quick swap Mona playstyles, but there are some weapons that buff normal and charged attacks that would need Mona to be on-field to utilize. EM weapons are also an option in vaporized playstyles, though they're not consistently maximized in other teams, so crit, attack, and damage bonuses are more universally usable. Anyway, there's a lot to list down and each weapon comes with their own pros and cons in ideal playstyles, but this is more or less generally a case of work with what you have. Finally, let's discuss Mona's potential synergies and popular team comps. In general, Mona can be inserted into teams as a flexible, offensive off-field support even without any special elemental synergy. Again, she mainly offers crowd control through her skill taunt, some amount of hydro application from her skill burst and dashes, and most importantly, significant damage buff through her omen. Unless you exploit its extension mechanics, the short duration of her omen may be more challenging to maximize for DPSs with longer on-field durations or damage windows, but units with shorter bursts of damage can more easily sync with it. Either way, if you find your team in want of a flex support where Hydro won't interfere with your intended reactions, then Mona certainly has a good damage boosting utility to offer. But now, let's go through elemental team templates where she can have more synergies in. As discussed in her burst mechanics regarding her omen extension tech, keeping enemies frozen is a unique way for free seems to prolong and maximize her omen buff. Here, Mona will support a cryo DPS, and having another cryo unit is highly advisable to unlock the cryo resonance bonus. The remaining flex slot is generally an animal unit who will shred the enemy's cryo resistance and group them together for more effective crowd controlling, but it can be another hydro or cryo unit or generally just someone that doesn't interfere with freeze who can offer either offensive or support utilities your team wants. One thing to keep in mind as well is that her hydro application is relatively more limited compared to other hydro units with more sustained or wider AoE application. If Mona is the only hydro unit in the team and depending on your rotation, it's possible that you may see some downtime on keeping the enemies frozen. It's not necessarily a deal breaker though and there are ways to compensate for this. Even with just her skill and burst, she can still keep the enemies frozen in the majority of some free steam rotations. If it's a quick swap team, you can also insert Mona auto attacks in between teammates or or hit enemies with her dashes for extra sources of hydro. If you do want more hydro application, you can always slot in another hydro unit. As a throwback, one of the most popularized free teams that Mona is a core member of is the Morgana team, which makes great use of her omen buff and extension mechanics combined with Venti and Ganyu's burst combo. Its original version involves teammates Ganyu, Venti, and Diona, but we now have some possible substitutes like using Layla over Diona as your defensive teammate. As long as the enemies are suckable and freezable, it'll still be a strong effective team. For a Mona vaporized team with high damage potential, the Bennett Shengling core is an indispensable duo to combine with Mona thanks to Bennett's huge attack buff and Shengling's pyronado damage and no ICD application. The fourth flex slot is subject to your preference. If you want to boost their damage, an Animo unit will be a great pick to mainly shred enemy resistances, and units like Kazaha or Sucrose can infuse their bursts with an element. Alternatively, adding a Hydro or Pyro unit can be another source of damage or elemental application, and it will also influence if Pyro or Hydro will be 
be the main triggers of the vaporized reaction. Of course, comfort can also be important to some players, especially when you're using Mona on field. It can feel bad getting staggered constantly if you can't dodge or iframe well. If so, you can totally go for a shielder like Zhongli or Layla who won't interrupt the vaporized reaction process as much. A unit that can also provide interruption resistance like Dia is an option as well. The potentially tricky part here is determining what the dominant reaction will be, as this could be a forward or reverse vaporized team, with Mona or Shangling being either of the main triggers. But if you don't really want to think about who's triggering vaporized, then you can just choose to not care as much. The great thing is that if you've built either Mona or Shangling sufficiently, then whichever one triggers the vaporized will still deal good damage either way. This is the most stress-free way to approach this team, and something that I would recommend to most players aiming for an easy-to-play Mona vape team. If you want to be more specific about who's triggering vaporize, like ensuring that it's always Mona that vaporizes for example, then that would take a more deliberate approach of properly setting up your elemental application, which you would want a basic understanding of elemental gauges and ICD to better control your reactions. If you're interested in learning about those, I encourage you to check out more in-depth resources about them. For non shungling vaporized teams, Mona can also help boost the damage of other on-field pyro DPSs, but since she can't provide sustained hydro application from off-field, it's most likely you'll need to pair her with another off-field hydro applicator. However, one pyro DPS that has a very short DPS window and controlled pyro application is Dia, whose burst only lasts for 4 seconds, which she can trigger vaporize on even just from Mona's burst and skill. Mona can also drive Electro Charge or Taser teams since her auto attacks hydro application allows her to consistently enable Electro Charge while driving Electro teammate abilities. She would be comped with off-field Electro units like Fischl, Beidou, Yai, etc. with a flex slot that is typically filled by an animal unit to shred both hydro and electro elemental resistance, but other options like a defensive support or another hydro unit are also viable. Taser teams are quite straightforward to play since you don't need to worry much about the order of elemental application here. If you're using an animal unit, it's also easier to double swirl hydro and electro since the electro charge reaction allows for both hydro and electro auras to coexist on the enemy. What about using Mona as a hydro applicator for Bloom, Hyper Bloom, or Burgeon reactions? While Mona may not be one of the most optimal choices for such teams, she can still be a viable choice if played properly. Note as well that Mona's Omen buff doesn't affect Bloom, Hyper Bloom, and Burgeon since these are transformative reactions. If Mona ends up being the only hydro on the team, she's best played as an on-field driver since Bloom teams really want consistent hydro application to continuously generate a lot of dendro cores. You'll have to use her auto attacks and dashes on top of her skill and burst to maximize her hydro app. Though in Burgeon teams, her solo hydro application might be lacking to counteract burning, leading to potentially slower core generation. Whether in Hyperbloom or in Burgeon teams, it's possible to bring in a second hydro unit for better and easier hydro application. Since Bloom-based teams also favor EM, it's an ideal scenario for Mona to use the four-piece instructor set build. This allows her to buff the team's EM for higher reaction damage if no other teammate is holding the set yet, and if she's played as an on-field unit, she can consistently maintain the buffs uptime by triggering reactions. One very the variant of a Hyperbloom team is adding in more quicken reactions to combine as a damage source with Hyperbloom. Mona's slower hydro application can be an advantage, since it will not get rid of the quicken aura as easily, which allows your Electro or Dendro units to trigger more aggravate or spread reactions respectively on a quicken affected enemy. Meanwhile, she will still generate some Dendro cores that your Electro unit can trigger for Hyperblooms. You'd need sufficient Dendro and Electro application in order to consistently maintain the quicken Dendro aura on enemies. Your team will also preferably have quick swap for units to allow Mona to switch in and out with more flexibility. This also makes more use of Mona's omen buff since quick and base reactions benefit from the damage bonus it gives. Those are her main team templates so far, but it will be interesting to see how her potential team synergies will evolve as we get more Fontaine releases. And that's it for this Mona guide. If you've set out to build and play her, hopefully you enjoy her gameplay despite her complicated mechanics. But let me know what you think of her down in the comments. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!